Hello viewers, welcome to Renew Media. This is the time for Sing Movie Renew. The things you can do with computer animation these days are just more and more amazing. In Sing, a funny animal jukebox musical cartoon written and directed by Garth Jennings, son of Rambo, there is a scene in which two post-punk porcupines one of whom has been selected to compete in a vocal competition, argue at home about the state of their relationship, and their musical direction. During their quarrel I thought, with absolute earnestness, wow, these porcupines have an unusually spacious apartment. The funny animal jukebox musical cartoon has a long and honorable history, dating back to for example, the 1936 animated short, I Love to Sing. That still beloved cartoon, directed by Tex Avery, features a jazz-loving young hooter who, much to the consternation of his classically trained family, builds himself a Owl Jolson on a radio amateur hour hosted by Jack Bunny. Sing is essentially that very short, writ large. A failing theatrical entrepreneur, Buster Moon, voiced by Matthew McAnoy, a koala of some winsomeness and no small enthusiasm, decides to revive his fortunes with a singing competition. From a slew of auditioners, his secretary, an iguana with one glass eye, has advertised the award money at dollar one hundred thousand rather than the single grand he actually has. He picks a motley handful. Among them, Johnny Taron Egerton, a gorilla from a British accented bank robbing clan, who sings like Sam Smith when he's not singing like Elton John, Rosita Reese Witherspoon, a stressed housewife pig, a crooning, Fedora sporting, smart mouth mouse named Mike, Seth MacFarlane, duh, and a shy elephant, Mina. Tori Kelly, who sings Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah to herself when nobody's listening. Sing is relentlessly amiable, and has little in the way of vulgar humor. There's just one flatulence joke, which has to be some kind of record for a contemporary non-Pixar kid-friendly animated movie. The film is produced by Illumination, the corporation behind Despicable Me and its spin-off, Minions. Mr. McAnoy's characterization of the eager koala is full of ingratiating pep. I found this to be a relief. From his line readings in the Lincoln TV ads, I worried that he might have been suffering from Lord Adam poisoning. A couple of scenes are quite charming such as Rosita's supermarket dance and little Mike's microphone acrobatics late in the movie. And yet, the movie is constantly knocking itself out trying to reach the approximate emotional temperature of that scene in Shrek during which Smash Mouth ruins, I'm a believer. The aggregate effect is like aesthetic insulin shock, albeit from an artificial sweetener. At the last we are given the rating is 3.5 and movie is good. Please subscribe our channel for correct reviews and remember our channel is Renew Media.